नमस्कार वेलकम टू प्रकाश एंड बेसिक्स आई एम प्रकाश जोग एंड वी बीन टॉकिंग ऑन वॉट लेजर्स आर आई टोल्ड यू ऑफ हाउ लेजर्स वे फर्स्ट प्रोड्यूस्ड एंड वॉट लेजर्स दम सेल्स आर टूडे लेट्स टेक वन स्टेप फर्दर लेट्स ट्राई एंड अंडरस्टैंड द बेसिक प्रॉपर्टीज ऑफ वॉट लेजर्स आर i'll concentrate on the major properties first because there are some specialized properties which we will talk of much later we must first understand that laser lasers is what is laser i told you that it's nothing but a special category of of uh, electromagnetic radiation and electromagnetic radiation of a particular region is nothing but light that we talk of so it's quite obvious that the basic properties of light are going to be followed by all laser beams as they are uh, we talked of quite a few of them uh, their speed or velocity is 3 into 10 raised to 8 meters per second that which is about 3 lakh kilometers per second uh, they are unaffected by electric fields or magnetic fields and uh, there is very little negligible effect of gravitation on light as such so naturally lasers are also affected minimum by light then we talked of so many other properties i discussed them quite a few of them in detail uh, reflection refraction uh, dispersion interference uh, diffraction uh, all these uh, all these properties are followed uh, by lasers also no. but then what's so different about it uh, we have to realize that some of these properties that we see are multiplied a million times or a billion times in lasers and so naturally the overall effect of those is going to be drastically different amplified so many more times and so naturally that's what makes lasers completely different from normal light that we talk of there are many techniques by which you can understand things i am going to follow a technique which is known as example rule example today uh, let me give you an example it's a packet of uh, those noodles maggi packed and sealed uh the quality of packing and things have changed and deteriorated of over the last uh, so many years than when i remember as a kid uh but look at the way in which these noodles are packed why are they put in this manner so that more of them can be fitted into a single packet taking up minimum amount of space for this see what has been done the general shape of uh, them is like a wave uh, let me break it down to a single bit so you can see that it's a it's a set of waves but they are all matched they are all moving in the same manner and it's not it's not only this because if i take a set a multiple set of layers like this then you will see that all of them tend to fit into each other perfectly matched out so the way in which they flow even if i open it out break it into pieces and separate them out their general tendency is to remain in that particular manner in that particular plane flowing in the same manner but the instant i put it in boiling water they will all turn into a mesh with all those wiggly things going in all possible direction but the nature of each of those wiggles will tend to remain the same in the beginning and now if i pour it out all of them will flow in the same direction but some of the wiggles will be like this and some like this and some in some other direction think of all this when we talk of properties of of what lasers are think of all this as we talk okay uh let me keep those noodles aside that's not their basic job is over right now 
Okay. So, what is the first property? One of the most important properties of lasers is they are monochromatic. Mono means one chroma is color. When we talked of colors some a couple of months back, uh, I told you that a bunch of wavelengths very close to each other uh, of a particular type will give us a sensation of one particular color yellow or green or blue and so forth or if you mix a bunch of them a combination of these two or three bunches of colors bunches of wavelengths will result into uh, another color like uh, a combination of the two of them and so forth. But then if I want a pure color then I must stick the, if I want to make it very bright very clean then I must stick to as minimum number of wavelengths as possible. So, they must have only one wavelength ideally and only one frequency if possible. And so, how pure a spectral color is, is what monochromaticity is. Chroma monochromaticity is the measure of purity. Mathematically, uh, it is written in terms of a ratio, the amount of difference in the in the wavelengths to the original wavelength. Its uh, population of India is 140-150 uh, billion. Uh, we are going to go far beyond that. Let's say there are uh, 1,000 billion waves, and only one out of those 1,000, that means out of one th one trillion, only one of them has a slight variation in wavelength that is the extent of purity of a laser beam. So, if it has been designed for a particular wavelength, it will be 1 trillion of them will have only one of them going out of out of tune. That is the level of uh, purity of a laser beam. So, naturally it is extremely intense, extremely bright in nature, a very pure color. So, if you look at any laser beam, a green one or a pink one or any of them, why do we find it so bright and clear? That is because of this factor. The second property is probably more important. Uh, the word is very simple, it is known as uh, coherence. That is more of a mathematical or a term from physics to a very large extent. Uh, when you start studying things, you <coughs> represent everything in terms of maths or physics or something of this sort. And so, for every wave, there is an equation. And in this equation, um, there is a particular part that decides how it changes, and that part is known as the phase or a phase angle. And it is this angle that is exactly identical for all waves. Because of that, all the waves behave in the same manner at all times. There is of course, uh, there are subcategories, spatial uh, coherence and time based coherence and so forth. Let us keep that aside. Let us keep all that complicated issue. How they behave together? If one rises, everyone will be rising up. If one goes down, all of them will be going down. So, it is quite natural that they are going to fit into each other. And so, the concentration is going to drastically build up. So, naturally all the properties that are aligned with this are going to keep on increasing. The effect is that their energy matched out energy is going to multiply, their concentration is going to drastically increase, their brightness is going to increase their corresponding power is going to increase, the temperature that they create is going to build up. How many times? A billion times, a trillion times and it is this that makes the lasers a special thing. Because if all these properties get multiplied a billion times, their effect is going to multiply a billion times and that is the one that deals with the use and application and special characteristics of what lasers are. Naturally, this has its own advantages, its own drawbacks also, because uh, all these uh, waves 
uh, if one laser beam of a very small value even enters your eye and hits your retina, all the rods and cones there are going to get destroyed permanently. Provided of course, there is a some amount of a time gap possible. But it is possible that you could use a pulse laser and uh, spot weld your reti if the, there are some people who have a uh, retinal problem the retina drops off. So, you can get it at the right place and as good as spot weld the corners and fix up the retina at a particular point and that is done by using a, a laser beam. So, how to use this laser is a different issue and that is based on the smartness of the humans uh, we will come to that sometime later. Uh, so, all these properties get uh, modified to a very large extent you cannot see light, but a beam of laser a pencil of laser or a thin ray of laser as it passes through air it illuminates even the smallest of particles and it is these glowing particles that we tend to see. And so, a beam of lasers can be seen as it goes through uh, a particular you will see so many film clips on laser beams that travel ahead and all those laser shows and all those beams that you see is because of their illumination of particles. So, how the effect takes place depends upon the ingenuity of the humans that tend to use it. Now, naturally, if they fit into each other their power is going to multiply, uh, the heat generated would multiply a billion times and so, a 2 inch, 3 inch, 4 inch, 6 inch steel plate is like putting a hot uh, knife on butter, it will just cut through and not like melting butter that spreads out no very clean sharp cut and we can use it for surgery also. So, you can you can imagine the power that is developed by all these lasers for that you need one more minor property and that is like light a lens that focuses or collimates light same way lasers can also be collimated by using lenses and focused at a particular point increasing their properties still further. This is another major property of lasers and that is known as directionality. The very word is very clear that they all tend to move in one particular direction. They do not tend to spread it is it is it is not a it is not it is not like uh, those noodles flowing down a glass uh, in all possible direction generally in one particular direction. I could think of another beautiful example um, think of uh, uh, if you see a, a very big crowd drifting uh, like in my city uh, in Pune we have uh, in the Ganesh festival where where all the idols are immersed finally in one particular river and there are hundreds and thousands of people drifting along in a particular direction. In fact, surprisingly the flow of current is also has this particular drift velocity where everything flows in one particular direction. But then they generally tend to move like this, like this, like this, like this, like this, and finally go in one particular direction. That's not a crowd milling around. It's like a uh, 26 January parade that we have, uh, where there is a group of soldiers marching, all matched, all concentrated in one particular direction, all steps matched out, all coherent all compacted together one fixed direction even the eyes are directed in one particular direction and that is exactly what happens to a laser beam. There is very small divergence or spread out think of a torch and a laser beam. You can actually see a laser beam if I, I if I use a laser pointer uh, and if I point it uh, anything around in my house the pointer would keep dancing around as a single spot. If I take it out of the window and put it on the next building the building could be about 100 meters 50 meters 20 meters further away, but there will be still one single dot even at this distance that I can see at night. Think of a torch the instant you switch on a torch the light starts spreading out and by the time it goes to about 10 feet it is already diverged and spread out. So, torch beam spreads light to about 30 degrees angle a cone of an angle like this. 
they used to use search lights they still use them in circuses and so forth and those search lights have a divergence of about 10 degrees 8 8 to 10 degrees so the beam is like this and and goes further as far as the laser beam is concerned the divergence is very small it is 0 0.03 3, 4, 0, 1 degrees. My God. How much is that? Actually, if you take 1 degree, which is taking a circle, dividing it into 360 degrees, 1 degree, split it up into 60 parts, that is 1 minute. So, the divergence of a laser beam is said to be less than 2 minutes of an arc. That is why once you put that beam of laser, it can go to miles and miles and miles without spreading out. So, the energy is going to remain concentrated to that extent to a very large distance. And so, if I put a, 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 a information signal on top of this, that signal is going to go without divergence to the exact spot. So, when I want to send a beam of light to a satellite or a, uh, or, or a spaceship that is moving around um, or, or the Chandrayaan and other vehicles that we send, now how are you going to communicate? If you put, if you send a signal, it will spread and the further it goes, the less will be the strength, so hardly any signal will reach. So, what do you do? You concentrate it or send it with the help on the back using laser as the carrier wave and take the information. So, carrying information to very large distances to satellites to, to uh, when you send ve vehicles to the space or moon and other places all these places many a times the signal is carried using laser that is why optical cables are used and optical communication has gained importance. So, lasers have therefore gained their importance because their divergence is 900 times less than normal light, normal focused beam or concentrated beam. Naturally, information will be sent and received that much more better by using laser communication. There is one more property of light that we have not discussed in detail and that is known as polarization. All these laser beams are extremely polarized, they have very high degree of polarization that is what gives rise to those holograms and other effects that we know of. I told you right in the beginning that waves, light waves are transverse waves, so they move like this or like this and so forth. So, if you have one end of the rope tied to your end and my end and I create a ripple and the ripple will travel along the rope and that is how a wave will travel. But I could send the ripple like this or like this or like this, still it will go towards you, the energy is going to get transmitted. But if I restrict all the vibrations to one single plane, then that light is said to be plane polarized light. Think of a snake that travels, a snake is moving towards you, no, it can go like this and reach you. So, all its vibrations are restricted to one single plane as it goes ahead. You do not have a snake that looks at you and goes like this and then looks at you and then goes like this like this and then goes like this like this sometime and then like this and then finally like this or like this, no. All its vibrations are restricted to one particular plane add that to another fact that there is another snake whose vibrations are exactly matched and so the two of them will move together and a billion of them will move together in one particular plane and so that is a whole mass of waves that is traveling in a particular direction. So, imagine the increase in its strength and power and that is exactly what happens in case of a, light, of a laser beam. All the waves are highly polarized and matched out coherent and so have a very strong intensity as they travel further and more intense it is the brighter it is. So, naturally the brightness of these laser beams is extremely high. How much light or how many photons fall per unit area per second 
on a particular point will tell us how bright it is. It is obvious, it is a very simple logic. So, the concentration of waves of the photons will decide on the brightness, but how bright is it? Let us keep the definitions aside, let us talk of something to num to use numbers to identify what it is. They are fitted into each other, so the strength has multiplied. How much? A, 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 tube, a bulb or a tube light could be a 40 watt bulb or um, uh, a 40 watt tube light and so forth. And we talked of uh, all this long back. So, if I take a tube light of 40 watts, I take its strength um, 1 40th of it that will be a 1 watt system. I break it up into 1 million parts, I am sorry 1000 parts and that will give me a milliwatt. I break it down into further 10 parts what I get is a 0 0.1 milliwatt power. So, it is extremely weak. So, if I have a helium neon laser of 0 0.1 milliwatts, the intensity of that beam of that laser is approximately 100 times the intensity of sunlight. Imagine what will happen to your retina if that goes into your eye. So, pointing laser beams at somebody else is as good as destroying that person's eyesight. So, we need to be very careful, we need to understand how strong this is. And if you concentrate on a on a different type of a laser which is a CO2 laser, all that is going to be generated in terms of heat and that is what is going to cut through steel or any material or rock or diamonds very easily. And that is one of the uses and properties that we have to talk of sometime. As I said, correlate all this information to, uh, to the um, two examples I talked of. That Maggie packet that I talked of, uh, uh, the noodles packet that I talked of, how the waves fit into each other, how they travel only in one particular direction, how they are in one particular plane and you will recollect and realize all the properties or as I said think of a bunch of uh, or, a, or, a, or, a, or a group or a platoon of soldiers perfectly synchronized marching along a road that we see in parades and see how normal group of milling people around and how that band of platoon or the group that makes a difference all the properties we talked of light of lasers can be explained by using these two just think of them think of what happens and you will realize all the special properties that lasers have. <coughs> but then sometimes some properties have to be enhanced a little more for that you need a different type of a laser. Also it is possible that you can use this laser for many different applications. So, we need to understand what are the different types of lasers and simultaneously understand what are the special uses that these lasers can be put to. That of course, is something that we will talk of next time we meet. If you have liked whatever I have said, please like and subscribe to this channel, tell your friends about it, let them know that you know about lasers now. Till we meet again to look at the applications of lasers. This is Prakash Zog saying Namaskar. <laughs>